Chapter 9 Justice is so focused on the upcoming state debate tournament, he barely notices Christmas and New Year's as they blow by. Of course, the morning of the tournament itself is the last thing on his mind. For one thing, two nights ago, he broke up with Mello again. He's pretty sure for the last time. As they sat in her basement with her rambling with her rambling about stuff that has no bearing on anything that matters, Manny's words rang through Justice's head like a five bell alarm. If Mello and SJ are diver- diverging paths on the road of life, you're headed for a dead end. Speaking of SJ, that's the other reason he can't focus. As she steps out of the hotel elevator, smiling at him like he made the sun rise, his brain goes to mush. Though they cleared things up the the day after the mellow SJ cafeteria showdown, just, I'm sorry for sidelining you, S. SJ, I forgive you. Don't let it happen again. Seeing SJ now, Justice can tell how big of an idiot he's been, especially considering the fitted skirt suit and heels she's rocking. You ready? She says once she's standing right in front of him. He just stares. Her smile fades and she touches her cheek. What? Is there something on my face? No. Justice clears his throat. You look really nice, is all. Oh, thanks. Her cheeks turn pink. Justice thinks he might combust. combust. She winks and tugs at his tie, which matches the deep maroon of her suit just like they planned. You're not too bad yourself. Just then, Doc comes around the corner from the breakfast buffet with the rest of them in tow. Good morning, my little lion cubs. He steps between Justice and SJ and drapes an arm around each of their shoulders. Ready to rumble? You bet we are. Watch it, Friedman, just says in Doc's voice. Just says in Doc's voice. Doc and SJ laugh. Seriously, though, Doc says, I know your round isn't until after lunch, but you feel like you're ready? Ready? What? Doc isn't saying. He still hasn't gotten his mind around the fact that his top two debaters elected to Fargo, the actual debate rounds of the tournament, and focus solely on advanced pairs argumentation. In other words, they've got one shot. We're as ready as we'll ever be, SJ says. She reaches past Doc to squeeze Jess's hand, just looks at her, and she smiles. He has no clue how he's going to get through this day. Truth be told, Jess and SJ hadn't settled on a topic until a couple of weeks ago. They were in her basement. She was sitting across leg cross she was sitting cross legged with her laptop open in this massive wicker chair. Mr. F imported from Israel and Jess was pacing around the pool table, using the cue like a hobbit staff, trying not to ogle her legs. He sighed as he passed her again. Maybe we should just do the stereotype thing. We've got a solid argument there. Yeah, minus the fact that the guy presenting it wasn't affected at all, she smirked. Well, we got to pick something, S, he said. Like now, we're running out of time. I know, I know. Give me a sec, okay? I'm working on something. She went back to typing and just and just his mind went in a different direction. Over the past couple of days, it really sunk in that this would be his and SJ's final tournament together when it was over. His excuse for hanging out with her would be kapoop. And then what would he do? He glanced over at her again. She was rocking her glasses with her hair in a messy knot, his favorite way for her to be. Yeah, just last night he'd been at Mellow's, and definitely not for anything academic, but being around SJ was just different. He didn't want to let it go, but had no clue how to keep it going. Oh my God, what? I think I've got it. Come here. She uncrossed her legs and made room for him in the chair. As he squeezed in beside her and felt her whole left side pressed against his right, he had to take a clandestine deep breath. She smelled like fruit and flowers and forced him self to focus. 
So check this out, she said, rotating the screen so he could see it. The myth of the super predator was the title of the article. The gist of this, back in the 90s, some big shot researchers predicted that the number of violent crimes committed by African-American teen males would skyrocket in the years to follow. The leading authority on the matter dubbed this potential criminals super predators. Justice already knew about the super predator myth. He'd stumbled upon the whole thing while trying to deal with his own profiling trauma. But he let SJ keep going because when when would he get to see her all absorbed in debate research and talking a million miles per minute again? He'd miss this. Fortunately, the prediction was incorrect. She went on. Crime rates among youth plummeted. He smiled. Okay. Unfortunately, it seems the fear of young black guys created by this research is alive and well. She ran a fingertip across his wrist. And time to get up. He went back to Payson. So where would we go with this, S? Well, I'm thinking we could do an argument on racial profiling. Just stopped. You're not serious. I am. So you've lost it, is what you're really telling me. Oh, come on. We can have... We, we, oh, come on. What do we have to lose? Uh, the tournament? Screw the tournament. She shut her laptop and came over to where he was. This is something people need to hear about, Just. It's an argumentation gold mine. Mmm. It wasn't that he didn't believe they could form a solid argument. She was right. The numbers spoke for themselves. The real issue, he didn't want to be the black guy accused of playing the race card at a state tournament. He turned to her then, though he prob- probably shouldn't have, because feelings. I don't know about this, S. I didn't sleep for a week after that, after what happened to you, just, she said. I know we might be throwing away our chance at a win, but if we can get some facts out there, maybe make people think a little bit, it'd be worth it, right? Just didn't say a word. She threw an arm over his shoulder. Boob on the biceps. It's our last hurrah, she said. Let's go out with the bang. As I come on, Jesse, she pouted. He sighed. There would be no turning her down. Fine, he said. Let's do it. Because of their combined debate record for the season, eight wins, one loss, one tie, Jess and SJ are the final pair in the division to present their argument. When their names are called, they step into the glaring stage, lights, and up to the adjacent podiums. The only people Jess can see are the three judges. The center judge says, you may begin, and SJ launches into their introduction with her final sentence. We are here to argue that racial disparities in the U.S. criminal justice system are largely due to racial profiling. A murmur trickles through the audience. Just his stomach clenches and a bead of sweat runs down his side from his armpit. Two of the ju- judges are stone-faced, but when he locks eyes with the third, a white lady, she nods at him. His eyes shift among the three of them as he and SJ rattle off the statistics that support their argument. Drug use versus drug conviction numbers. Arrest numbers in minority populated versus white populated police zones. By the time they get to the super predator stuff, all three judges are wrapped. That's when Just realizes SJ was right. Whether or not they win this tournament, he needed to talk about this in a public forum. When they're done, Jess feels like he's walking in a dream. He and SJ get get backstage, and the team sweeps them sweeps them up in hugs and high fives. Doc, with visibly moist eyeballs, tells Jess how proud he is, and a black guy from another team nods at him from across the room. Some random cute girl from another school brings him water with her number scrawled on the cup, and he sees SJ slip it in the garbage when she thinks he's not looking. He has no clue how much time passes between them leaving the stage and hearing the 
Imps return to announce the results. But the next thing he knows, Doc and the team are filling out to return to their seats. None of it feels real. Without thinking too much about it, he drapes an arm around SJ's shoulders. She turns to wrap her arms around his torso. And when she buries her face in his neck, his other arm slips around her waist. They breathe. The MC calls third place. It's not them. SJ inhales and just feels her ribs expand. When the MC calls second, and it's not them, just squeezes tighter. S, I just want to say, hush it. You can tell me later. Bossy, she chuckles. It makes him feel better than he's felt in a long time. And your state champions in the advanced pairs argumentation division from Balselton Preparatory Academy, Justice McAllister and Sarah Jane Friedman. They don't let go.